Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have some interesting news coming from the folks at SideFX and this has to do with the Houdini engine. The folks at SideFX are the creators of Houdini engine and by far this is the best and the most used procedural tool out there. Houdini is known for its capability of working with nodes. Being a tool that is procedurally driven, it simply means that you can actually work non-destructively with Houdini. Now the beautiful thing is that the folks at SideFX, creators of Houdini, has actually made the Houdini engine free for commercial commercial customers. Now this was something that wasn't free before. It was only available for free for indie artists but right now it is very interesting to see that commercial customers, commercial artists and studios, anyone that is working with Houdini regardless of the license that you have right now can actually use this and start creating stuff. Now most of you guys might be asking what is this Houdini and you know what is this engine and how does this actually work and today we're going to take a look at what Houdini is, what the engine does and how you can actually get started with working with Houdini. I've actually been using Houdini for a couple of years and I can tell you by far Houdini seems to be one of the most I wouldn't really say the word stable but it is a tool that you know what your outcome is going to be like when you get to dial in those numbers and those values so since it's a heavily procedural tool you can actually use this for a wide range of things going all the way down and scrolling down you will notice that there is a category that deals with things that you can actually use Houdini for and in terms of film and television it is heavily used as a tool for VFX and also for creating those explosives and all those fractures you know secondary fractures and all those third and fourth degree kind of fractures that you want to create and in terms of game development development I've actually done a couple of videos about this one. Houdini is a tool that you can literally pick up and use to create procedural tools and also procedural assets that you can actually throw into your game and populate your entire scene. Now the procedural asset that you get to work with and also create in Houdini actually helps you instead of reiterating and remaking the same versions or different versions of the same model over and over you can just simply tie everything in one tiny procedural package and send this off to both Unity and also Unreal. And this is actually one of those things that makes so much sense. And once you go through that route, it actually becomes less and less interesting when you have to model everything by hand. Now, next off, Houdini is heavily used in motion graphics and also in VR. Now, what is this engine? The Houdini engine is sort of like the core of Houdini which is being baked into a tiny package that exists in other third party programs. So for example, in Unity, Unreal, Maya, 3D Studio Max, you can actually have a portion of Houdini engine living in them, but this simply means that for those things to work, Houdini needs to be installed. Because what actually happens is, the engine actually calls on Houdini under the hood, and that is how Houdini gets to work with this. So for the most part, you cannot just install Unreal Engine and install Houdini Engine and expect it to work. So what actually happens is, once you've made a digital asset, the engine actually calls on Houdini and runs whatever that you're working with in terms of this digital asset under the hood. And this is where the whole idea of Houdini engine actually makes so much sense. Meanwhile, if you want to get this as a commercial customer, you can order for up to 10 licenses and this still remains free for indie artists. Now going over to where you can see how to get Houdini and buy Houdini and all that stuff, there's a free version which is the apprentice version, there is the indie version which actually allows you to you know, own Houdini for a certain period of time and this comes with a free engine there's the artist version which is just this one that comes with the houdini effects which is heavily for effects the houdini core which is the core version of houdini that deals with both the compositions and all that stuff and then the main houdini engine and this one right now you have to pay for it if you're owning houdini via the artist section for those working in studios there's a purchase section for houdini engine education actually has a free one and right here is where you get to pick up the Houdini engine for free. Now the Houdini engine which you're picking up for free is only available for Unity and Unreal. And for those wondering how does this engine actually work, what is the whole idea about it and probably you haven't seen Houdini before and maybe that's why you're asking all this. Right now we're going to take a look at how this tool works and everything you need to know. So first off this is what the almighty Houdini looks like. For the first time once you look at it it looks a bit complicated and all that stuff but really it is not. Just think about this as your shelf. So you have a shelf for almost everything that you want to create and this makes it easy instead of trying to find that menu or that menu button you have everything just staring at you and you can simply work with them. Right over here is where you have your viewport, right here is where your properties exist and right here is where you create your notes. Just very simple. And for those who like to try this, there's a non-commercial version of Houdini. Simply go ahead, pick that one up and start playing with it. Now how do you create things and how does this engine thing really really work? 
So for example, if we tap right here, one thing to keep in mind is Houdini has a couple of OPs, all right? And those things are known as operators. So you have like your subs, your dubs, your pops, and all that stuff. So different operators are for different stuff. So right now, I can press the tab key and put in a simple box. So for anyone who wants to get a good idea about this, think about the geometry nodes that exist in Blender. The geometry nodes idea that exists in Blender right now is actually being inspired by Houdini. And the thing about Houdini is from the ground up, everything is actually nodes. So from the simulation to the fracture to you just simply making digital assets, everything is nodes. So what we need to do next is if I press the tab key, I can type in the word wire and get in a simple wireframe. Now, once I throw in this wireframe, one thing to keep in mind is once you have a simple node, this right here is to bypass whatever thing that is going on from here. So it's more like you're muting the node. Right here, you get to find the information about it, freeze the node from here, and then you can template or actually view. And all of these flags right here are the flags that are responsible for things that you get to do and also things that you get to see within your nodes, all right? So if I go in and click on this button and turn on the visibility flag, what happens is I get to see this and because this is procedural it simply means that we can go in and throw in a simple merge and once I click right there and get this merge I can merge this and also merge this and right now we have this stuff all right so with this now what about we creating a simple asset so I'd like to show you guys how you can create a digital asset that you can now export and actually bring in by simply using the Houdini engine so let's say this is the asset or you know this is the thing we want and instead of making various lens and iteration of one particular asset we can actually tell houdini what we want and houdini will just simply get that available so how do you create asset how you can create assets is as simple as selecting everything that you have right here going all the way to this section within you know where you have your menus click right here to create the subnet and within the subnet you can now simply add parameters so also think about it like how you get to add parameters while working in blender so how do you add your own custom or how do you promote the parameters from here over to this and how you can do that is as simple as clicking on the gear icon right here go over to edit parameter interface select one two three and four and make sure that you have them as invisible stuff all right so let's select these ones and make them invisible now that they're invisible we need to promote the parameters that we have right over here now the parameters that i have here i want them to be able to be translated over to the root and for the root if i click on apply you would notice that all of those things are invisible now how do i promote these parameters how i can promote the parameters is very very simple all i need to do is just simply double click and then i need to select whatever thing that i want and in this case i can pick the uniform scale click and drag right there and once i click on apply and go all the way back you notice that we have the uniform scale so let me show you guys how this one work right now we have this so i can actually do something like that but if you also want to control the length and the breadth now this even makes it more interesting because we can simply bring a float and connect that float right there and call this the length so let's just simply call this the box length all right so box underscore length and also we will just call this the length so if we make this the length we can click on apply and once we do that you would notice that we have this here now most of you guys are like okay is this simple and yes it is that simple so for you to control the length of the box by simply using this you just simply need to do one thing and that is going over to where you have copy parameter and copy this parameter jump right over here and right here because we want this to control the length we can simply right click and say paste relative reference and once we do that and press the enter key what happens is this that once we go in and start doing that you see the magic very very simple so if this is the asset that you're trying to make maybe instead of making just one you want to make something that you can control and maybe control like so instead of making several iterations of this i mean this is at its minute state so instead of making you know several iterations of this maybe this is just the procedural asset you want you can now simply bundle these things and export and bundling these and exporting simply means you need to go over to your asset section and go over to this section that says make new digital assets from selection put in the details that you want and that is how easy it is to make your own digital asset and so if you already exported what you created all you need to do is go over to the houdini engine section go over to the section where you have as load file 
and there is actually details on how you can work with the houdini engine in the description so you can simply go over to that link and see how you would be able to install your own version of houdini engine so if you have that installed go over to Houdini engine and this is similar with what you have in both unreal engine right so go over to houdini engine go all the way down here to where you have the load file and simply click on hda now once you click on hda you notice that we have the boxy right there and click on open now once you bring this thing right in you will notice that this is what we have so the same things that we created earlier you can actually see them right there and i can actually go in and do some cool stuff all right so these are the kind of lovely and beautiful things that you can do so in case you want to create things like procedural assets you want to create assets that you can throw into your game engine and you don't want to create multiple versions of the same set of assets you can simply use houdini and houdini engine to make things work faster meanwhile the folks at side effects have also giving out a couple of free unity starter kits and also on real kit so just in case you want to learn houdini engine you want to get started with it you want to know what and what this actually does and maybe you want to go in and invest some more time you can literally take advantage of all of these things right here and get good with them and at the same time if you guys would like me to cover some more videos about houdini engine maybe with unity and houdini engine maybe with unreal engine maya or 3d studio max simply put that in the comment section and i'll do my best to cover these and that's about it the houdini engine is now available for commercial users for free and for anyone who would like to use this you can simply go over to link in the description and check these things out if you want to read more about this you want to see what and what is supported like right now you can see that the Houdini engine for Unity is only supported for Unreal and also for Unity and it's not supported for those who are working with Maya or if you want to do some batch processing and you also notice that the Houdini engine that costs a couple of bucks which is the paid version of Houdini engine is actually available for all of this so just in case you guys would like me to cover some more videos about this simply put that in the comment section and of course I'll do my best to get to you tell me what you guys think about this one and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update and i'll like see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace